I'm both excited and nervous about testing the Bike Tricks XD. Now, Bike Tricks makes this motor in Canada. On their website, they say this motor is rated for 2,000 watts. Now, real quick, I have to point out that this is a mid drive motor, but unlike the other mid drive bikes I'm gonna test, I don't have to run this through different gears. So, this is actually gonna be really easy for me to test this, really easy to reproduce these results because they have the normal pedal drivetrain on the right hand side, and the drive system from the motor to the rear wheel runs on the left hand side with its own chain. So even though this motor is mounted in the middle, like a mid-drive like the BVS HD, the Bafang Ultra series of motors, there are no extra gears to shift through. This thing is basically set up in one speed. But when you get up to high power levels like this, you don't really need more than one speed. So this is probably gonna be totally okay. And I just wanna give a special shout out to the owner of this bike, a local customer who brought it in for some service to be done graciously allowed us to do the dyno test. Now we are a dealer for Bike Tricks, so if you wanna buy one of these, make sure to reach out to us. I had one in the shop a little while back. We sold it. I didn't have one to test right now, even though I really wanted to. So thanks again for letting us do this while we had our hands on it. I changed up the layout on the screen just slightly from the previous videos, if you've watched those. I just removed the RPM that was showing up on the right hand side. That's the RPM of the drum. It's really not giving us any data that we don't already have with the speed, the miles per hour right here. So I decided to take that off and just make these three things bigger. Once again, we have our power in kilowatts. That is our horsepower. We have our torque in foot pounds, which if this cranks out a crazy number, I think there's a good chance it will. I'll convert that into Newton meters so you know how that compares as well. And then the speed is the speed in miles per hour of that rear wheel. This is always going to be higher than a realistic speed you're going to see because there is no aerodynamic drag of moving the bike forward and there is no weight on the bike being propelled forward. Now I did have someone smartly and correctly mention in the comments, well you are running a knobby tire and so therefore you do have aerodynamic drag on the tire. That is true, I won't argue with that. And several people have mentioned, why don't you put a standard tire on it so we're getting you know, more precise numbers for how much power the motor's producing. But the data I really wanna know is not the ideal perfect conditions, it's how does the bike run out of the box. So the only two things that I'm setting the same for every test is that I'm always fully charging the battery to 100% right before the run and I am cranking the rear tire up to whatever the max PSI is for the rating of the tire. Now, if we get into changing tires, then at what point do I stop? Do I start changing gear ratios so I can get more torque out of this? Do I start changing brake discs and spokes and chains? And realistically, I don't wanna get into all of that. I just wanna see how the bikes perform the way you buy them. Of course, if you go put a lighter tire on this smoother tire, lighter wheel, we're gonna get more power, and I am gonna test those kinds of things in other videos. But here it goes, the Bike Tricks XD. And Bike Tricks own, again, custom motor. Let's see what it can do in three, two, one. That's looking really good. All right, that's it, it's maxed out. Well, I think that had both a lot of power and torque. Uh, I'm gonna do a second run and just, I wanna see where that speed was.
like 99% sure this is gonna have more power and torque than any other bike or skateboard I've tested up to this point. Let's stop it and see what the official numbers are. But real quick, I gotta tell you about the sponsor of this video, Area 13. And in particular, our brand new free wheel removal tool. Previously, they were made out of a 4140 steel. We have since upgraded them to a new 51 CRV4, which is then black zinc plated. That means the new tool is both stronger and is going to be more resistive to the elements. Now, I designed this tool a few years ago specifically to use on Bafang hub motors. If you buy a normal freewheel removal tool to change the freewheel, the cluster of gears on the motor, you'll find that the tools don't work. Unfortunately, they don't fit over the motor cable. So I went ahead and made our own. So this is the newest, latest, and greatest version. These are in stock at area13ebikes.com. I'll put a link to these right here. Now back to the dyno results. And there we have it. 2.438 kilowatts. They advertised the bike as 2,000 watts, and we got over 2,400 watts at the wheel. So first off, Excellent job guys at Bike Tricks. This motor controller setup, whatever you've got going on inside there is killer on the power. Torque, 62.99 foot pounds. I gotta look at the board here. We're getting about 33 foot pounds of torque out of a Bafang 750 watt hub motor. I got a little more out of the skateboard. 60, we'll just round up to say 63 foot pounds is nuts. This is way more torque than anything else we've done. Let's write these numbers down, put it on the board, and then take a look at the charts to see where were we getting the max power and where were we getting the maximum torque. 62.992.43. Eight kilowatts. That is going to be pretty hard to beat from another production bike. And to the number one spot it goes. Let's change this to a color that's a little easier to see. Okay, so red line is the watts and blue line is the torque. Let's zoom in a bit here. Now I have been noticing a trend with most bikes that they hit the peak wattage fairly early. They sustain that for a while and then taper off. This one almost looks like it maybe tapers off a little sooner. Some of these bikes, this kind of holds out a little bit more and then kind of drops down. It's making way more power right in this range than anything else we've tested though. And we have to keep in mind that this is only a single gear, kind of like a hub motor. So it's a little harder for it to maintain that. If we had another gear we could shift into, we could hold that longer, you know, as the speed increases, but it's got so much power, it doesn't really need it. Really interesting that the torque just shoots straight up and there is that peak of 62.99, basically 63 foot pounds of torque. Let's see what that is in Newton meters. 63 foot pounds of torque is 85 Newton meters. So that is the most we've tested on anything. I see many hub motors that are rated for 80 Newton meters of torque, but that's at the axle. We're getting, you know, like a quarter of that or a third of that at the wheel. So this is actually making all of that power to the ground. And this is pretty good. We're hitting the peak power right about the same time. It's almost happening at exactly the same time. Just a slight bump a little further in. So here is my interpretation. Tell me if you have a different thought or if I'm wrong, but we're seeing torque shoot up to the max right at the beginning, almost no hesitation. Same thing with the max horsepower. I'm thinking that we could get more power out of this sustained for longer if the gearing was higher. So in other words, this thing is geared so low that you're getting the maximum out of it right away. But if we geared it higher, we would see these curves come up a little more gradual. So you'd have kind of a, a wider power band on the low end. Now that would probably 
be harder on the motor, it'd be harder on the chain, but that's my thought or just my thinking on the way I see this graph that by changing to a slightly taller gear, so it's gonna spin that rear wheel faster, you'd get the power more usable up at the higher end speeds. I did see that the RPM basically maxed out at about 38 miles an hour, and the Foxbat running the BBSHD is actually really comparable in one way. Both of these bikes are running the same exact Kenda tires at the same pressure. So even though this has more than a thousand watts on top of what a BBSHD motor has, it's not getting a lot more speed. I know there's more in this. Now, of course, that's gonna depend on terrain. It may not be practical to gear this up higher if you're going up a lot of hills. This might actually be perfect. With these kinds of numbers, I realistically don't see any hill that you wouldn't be able to climb. Or if you wanna use this for hunting and tow a trailer with a lot of weight behind it, it's gonna be able to handle this, no problem. I'm really impressed with what they've managed to do, not just because it's super powerful, but because they have it manufactured in North America. I do think it's gonna take a little while to find a bike that can put down more power than this. If you have an electric bike company and you build electric bikes and you wanna see your bike dynoed and you think it can outperform this, shoot me an email, let me know. I'd love to test it out. I am making all of these dyno results public on the Area 13 website. You can go to area13ebikes.com forward slash dyno. I've got charts there, these numbers of torque, horsepower. So if you just want a simple one-stop place to compare a bunch of different bikes and their real power numbers, that's area13ebikes.com slash dyno. And of course, make sure to hit the subscribe button and come back for more bikes.